Okay, rational functions. We're going to take a look at a couple of these basic rational functions that showed up in our function toolkit. So we already saw the graphs of these in a previous section. You'll notice as we look at this, we have f of x equals 1 over x and f of x equals 1 over x squared. Um, so as we think about these, here are the graphs, and we're not allowed to plug in 0 to either one of these. Because if you put a 0 in for x, you're going to be dividing by 0. And we're not allowed to divide by 0. So the domain on both of these we would say you're not allowed to divide by 0, so x is not allowed to equal 0. All right, so let's answer a couple questions about these graphs. First of all, the short run behavior. Um, in a previous problem, we had said short run behavior is what happens kind of in the middle of the graph. Um, not at the extremes, but at the middle of the graph. So x-intercepts could be included as short run behavior, but this one doesn't seem to have any x-intercepts. Let's focus in on this graph. Instead, what happens is we're not allowed to plug in 0, so we don't have a point on our graph at an x value of 0. So what happens in this case is um, as you get close to 0 on the left side and you get close to 0 on the right side, you have to make a choice whether to go down or to go up. So we can describe that behavior using limits. So one way to describe this is we can say the limit as our x values get close to 0 from the left hand side, that's what that little negative as a superscript indicates of our function 1 over x, where do those go? Like what x value are we getting close to? So again, as we get close to an x value of 0 from the left hand side and trace down the graph here, we're going to go down, 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 down. Well, those are y values approaching negative infinity. Okay, we could also say on the right hand side, the limit as x approaches 0 from the right of 1 over x. That's saying, looking at the graph, as we get close to an x value of 0 from the right hand side and trace along the graph, it goes up, up, up. Well, those are y values of positive infinity up there. Let's do the short run behavior on this other graph as well. So again, as the limit as x approaches 0. 0 is the problem over here as well. From the left hand side of 1 over x squared, tracing along the graph, getting close to an x value of 0, we go up, up, up. Well, we say that's positive infinity for a y value. The limit as x approaches 0 from the right hand side, tracing the graph from the right, going closer and closer, y values increase, increase, increase. So again, it's positive infinity for our y values. Now this one, these two are a little bit different in that we went different directions over on the left hand side. We want the exact same direction over here on the right hand side. So I believe we can rewrite this since they went the same place, the limit as x approaches 0 without um, a left hand limit or a right hand limit. So just approaching 0 for 1 over x squared. We should be able to say since they go to the same place, that's equal to infinity. All right, next, long run behavior. Long run behavior is what happens at the extremes as we go way off to the left and way off to the right. Now on both these graphs, they kind of do the same thing. This one's above the x-axis, this one's below the x-axis, but they're kind of going the same place. So to describe this using limits, what I can say is the limit as our x values go way off to the left hand side or approach negative infinity for 1 over x, what's happening with our graph? Well, the y values are getting closer and closer to 0 in this case, right? Getting closer to the x-axis, that's when y equals 0, but it never quite gets there. All right, when I say it never quite gets there, I could plug in a very, very large negative number, like negative 1,000 in for our x. Now, 1 divided by a very large number is a very small number, but it's not quite 0. And you could continue plugging in bigger and bigger x values, you get smaller and smaller overall numbers here, but you never quite get to zero. We can say that very similarly as we go off to the right hand side, as x values approach positive infinity, we're going tracing the graph out this way, we're getting close to the x-axis, that's a y value of zero. And on the, the right hand graph, the limit as x approaches negative infinity of one over x squared, that's tracing it out as we go off to the left way out here. That's getting close to the x-axis when y equals 0. And the same thing happens as you go towards positive infinity for 1 over x squared. Trace it out, you get really, really close to the x-axis.
So that's going to be a y value of zero. All right, now the definitions here, vertical and horizontal asymptotes. Vertical asymptotes are what we saw in the middle of our graph up above. Uh, it's going to be a vertical line where as you get close to it, you either choose to go up or you choose to go down. Your function either goes towards positive or negative infinity for the y values, right? It shoots up or it shoots down. We get a horizontal asymptote. In this, this case, it was at the x-axis for both of the, those because as our x values went to the extremes, either to negative or positive infinity, our y values approached a specific number. In our case, our y values, our f of x values, approached zero, the x-axis. Now, final formal definition of rational function. Rational functions are these fractions where the numerator is a polynomial and the denominator is also a polynomial. Now, a lot of books define these to be p over q. Nothing special about using those function names. Just know polynomial over another polynomial. Hope this helps.